Jose Enrique speaks exclusively to Black and White Banner, everyone. Exclusively to us. Welcome back to Black and White Banter. Now, this week is an exciting and a juicy one as former left back Jose Enrique spoke to us this week exclusively. A chat with us and us, 63 subscribers, and we're talking to ex players. <clears throat> the world's gone mad. So, how was this conversation triggered? Well, if anyone who has Enrique in social media has maybe noticed, Enrique posts a lot of stuff about his time at Liverpool and his love for Liverpool, just general. Score updates, thoughts on games, excitement for matches coming up, all these different things. So we asked the question to him this week, why, not out of pity, but why does he not mention more about our club? He played his best football, arguably, for Newcastle. He was probably one of our most solid left-backs of the last two decades. And he got that move to Liverpool by the form he had. And it's fair to say, and again, if you want to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, it's fair to say when he went to Liverpool, things never really worked out for him. He had a lot of knee injuries. I think at one point he was restricted to 21 appearances in three games. So why does he not shout about new, his time at Newcastle and us a little bit more? Fair question, I thought. So anyone who might have heard in the past three or four years, you might have seen it when the news first broke. Unfortunately, Jose found out that he had a tragic, uh, rare type of brain tumour behind his left eye. Absolutely awful news for him. This was just after he'd retired, uh, just after he'd hung up his boots. Now, for anyone that's a traumatic experience, and as you can imagine, the, the wishes from us Newcastle fans and fans all over the country and all over the world poured in massively, um, wishing him a speedy recovery. And luckily... Jose recovered fine. He went through his chemotherapy and he came out of his fighting at the other end. And as far as we understand, he is completely fine and fighting fit now, which is great news. But did Newcastle, under the Mike Ashley regime, get in touch and generally do enough to show that they cared about Jose, being the former player he was? Well, this is what Jose had to say on the matter. Newcastle, I believe it's not obviously nothing to do with the fans, but I believe, if I'm honest with you, I believe it's more to do with the, with the owner, that he doesn't give too much fuck about the ex-players, really, you know, because I really believe if we had another owner, he probably would have got in touch more with us and tried to make us involved and look at Jonas, how they treat Jonas, amigo. So, like I say, I believe it's a lot to do with the owner, that's why. Uh, Liverpool is done so well, you know, after my retirement, they support me a lot and that's why I've, I believe I have that, this love of well for the club and the fans as well. It just beggars belief, doesn't it? So, yes, Jose loves us as a football club, but do you blame the man? After, after playing for two football clubs, two great clubs in us and Liverpool, both very, very similar in terms of the fan base... The, the love for their football clubs, the living and breathing, you know, us and the Scousers, we always get on. But for ha to have one football club reaching out, supporting him all the way when he was going through such a tragic ordeal with him and his family, and then have Newcastle under the Ashley regime barely even make any contact whatsoever to reach out to a former player that's going through something like that. And it's not as if anyone at the football club didn't know about what was going on. You know, it was in every newspaper at the time. I remember reading about Jose. I think I, I think I even remember commenting on one of his social media posts, wishing him a speedy recovery. So the fact that, again, and I'm not going to go as far as saying Jose is a legend of Newcastle. He's not. And I don't think Jose would expect to be called a legend by Newcastle fans. He was a very good player for us. He was well-liked at the time. There was a bit of a sour taste in the mouth when he went to Liverpool. But we, we had the last laugh, obviously, with finishing above Liverpool the following season. But... There's a history of this, and it's just a toxic regime from top to bottom. We are a football club who love our legends. We love our ex-players, the ones who stood us, st stood by us, played well for us, and still passionately talk about us to the media and on radio stations today. So why are these people not involved in our club? You only have to go back, you know, reading about Solano four years ago, applying for the Newcastle job, and being tret like he played for Sunderland, in his words. That's what he told Newcastle fans TV recently. You know, Shearer, did he get the name stripped from the bar because there was a bit of a bit of taste there in 2013? We'll never know. Shearer's side denied it, but 
Did he really have to change it, the, the, the bar name from Shearer to nine? I'm not so sure. Keegan, I know Keegan took Ashley to court, but Keegan having to disguise himself to get into St. James's Park. We've got so many players who should be more involved with our football club. You know, Colaccini, he he's another recent player who should have more of a say. You know, Al the fact that Alan Shearer is not involved more with our football club is a disgrace. We have the Premier League all-time goalscorer, TV personality, and our record goal scorer of all time, he should be somewhere within our football club, guiding the football club and being an ambassador for us. And these people aren't because we have a terrible, terrible regime in place. And this does not... To hear that Enrique did not hardly get any contact from the club, that would leave a bit of taste in my mouth as well, but it just sums our football club up. Now, on a more positive note... Enrique went on to speak about his time at Newcastle and his love for the club. And this is what he had to say on playing for Newcastle on the, for the four years that he did. Like I said, you don't have to get me wrong when I say I, I have one of my most beautiful times as a footballer there in Newcastle, mate. No doubt about that. The, the goal I scored against Nottingham Forest that night was pff, unbelievable. You know, when we beat Sunderland 5 1 as well, you know, in, in Halloween night as well. Wow. The, then this type of days, you know, the promotion, obviously with Nottingham Forest, these type of things, they're unforgettable. And then the Premier League as well. And like I say, Newcastle will always have a beautiful place in my heart, mate. So, but like I say, I believe because the way the, the club is run, you know, maybe they don't treat the ex-players the way they should, you know, like maybe in Liverpool they do. They treat you like amazing. And, and that's why you, after you retire, you know, you... You feel the love more from the club because from the fans, like I said, I have no one complaining the opposite. You've been supporting me. You've been supporting me all the way, you know, and more with my illness, you know, from uh, the LFC fans, exactly the same. And like you say, it's very related because obviously, and you have to recognize that obviously worldwide, Liverpool is a club that has won a lot of titles, you know, so obviously they have more fan base in terms of that, but in terms of the city, mate, it's amazing to play at St. Jesse's Park as a local and, and Anfield for me, the best two stadiums to play as a local, you know, playing for their team. And it's not because I play for you too, it's just because it's the truth. It's amazing. The fans are, are Newcastle and the city, I really love the city. I know it's quite cold, you know, but I loved it there. So, nothing mate, all the best and, and nothing all the best with your YouTube channel as well and hopefully Newcastle as well, they stay in the division this year, you know, because hopefully someone else buy the club and, and they can spend more in the club. That's what they deserve. It's amazing to hear so many positive things from Enrique saying about his time at the club. He loved the fans, he loved the city. Obviously, so many memories that he has. For him, for him to mention the Nottingham Forest goal, his first goal for the club. I remember that night, the atmosphere that night was rocking when we beat them 2-0 at St. James's. I remember Enrique being piled on the floor with his top off. The fact that he still remembers that to this day just shows what an impression the club and the fans left on him. And obviously, he had to mention the Halloween 5-1 de demolition of Sunderland, didn't he? Anyone, you don't have to be a Newcastle fan or a Geordie to have appreciated beating your local rivals. 5 Goals to one. So did you not hear that? Five goals to one. What a day. Um, in terms of his best clubs, obviously, he's going to be biased and say Liverpool and Newcastle are two of the best clubs and best stadiums to play at in England. I would love to say he's being biased, but I think in terms of fan base, when things are going well in Newcastle, things are going well. Let's ignore how things are at the moment under Bruce. I know it's a very toxic atmosphere, even without fans in the stadium. But to hear... Jose speaking so highly of us and Liverpool and seeing those those similarities between the two football clubs, the passion and the fan base as well, is fantastic. Obviously, Jose wants Ashley out. He's not a fan of him. He's already said as much in previous interviews, but to hear it from, from the horse's mouth in our conversations within this week was a breath of fresh air. And it's, you know, if, if things are ever getting so obvious that something needs to change, it's the fact that ex-players are coming out and speaking about Ashley in this regime. Ex-legends are, the pundits are now starting to pick up on how bad Steve Bruce is as a manager. It's just a toxic, toxic time to be associated with Newcastle. But fantastic to hear from Jose and really, really interesting and no surprise to any of us Newcastle fans to hear that nobody reached out to him during that awful operation and 
uh, treatment that he had to go through to, to treat that brain tumour. It was fantastic to hear from him. And if you've liked this video and speaking to an ex-player, an ex-player speaking to us. So I, I, I need to get over that. But if you've liked this video, please click like and subscribe. The subscribers are slowly starting to creep up just a little bit. We love and getting the content bashed out. Also, make sure you get us on Facebook and Instagram where the posts are coming in thick and fast. We've had Solano sharing our, current, uh, our, our stuff. We've had Laurent Robert shared one of our videos the other day on his Instagram story. One of my favourite players growing up, the wand of a left foot of Laurent Robert, and he was sharing our stuff. So things are definitely getting better. Make sure you, you catch us and we'll be touching down later in the week for a Tottenham Hotspur match preview. Thanks for watching. Yes.